Hi, this is Augustine. This is another episode of Ask Augustine in cooperation with Tonebase. In this episode, I'm going to uh, present a couple of, of tricks that can make some really tough passages um, easier, even though they sound exactly like what's printed. It's, uh, what I'm doing is actually slightly different, but I always think what really counts um, is not doing it correctly. What really counts is that it sounds great and um, that it's the result that counts, you know, what, what it sounds like. So I'm going to first um, play it with um, the trick, so to speak, and then and you can see if you can uh, catch what exactly I did that's not exactly as printed, and then I'll, um, um, I will reveal it afterwards. So one of them is... <laughs> So the trick is, I am not playing this E. I'm playing an open string. And because of the speed at which the passage moves, the um, violin does not want to, is always reluctant to change octaves. So this will sound as one octave higher. It gives me extra time to put, to get the hand down to the next, to the third position. And actually it's quite leisurely plenty of time and this E which is really an open string but it sounds like this is actually even clearer and even cleaner than it would be if I played it with the fingering if I actually had a finger on it uh, the way it might look when you first look at the music this is a trick that I first um, saw as a f uh, written as a fingering in an edition by Carl Flesch but it actually works in many circumstances where you have a fast run and at one point there is, um, there is an E so you can catch it this way. Here's another one when doing chromatic glissandi. Instead of doing it just with the left hand, I also add a bit of, of portato with Mom de Beau. The idea behind this technique is that instead of doing the um, chromatically sounder solely with the left hand fingers, which makes it hard to control the speed, I add a bit of portato to it. And actually, as I'm adding more portato, I start um, defining the notes less with the left hand. So I go with the left hand and with the right hand I start the potato gradually. So as a result I get a slightly clearer definition of the notes and I have more control over the timing of them of the accelerando as I go down and I know that it's the right number of notes because sometimes when you let the left, left hand do it you might end up um, maybe with an extra note that you, don't, that you didn't want to have. So instead of having the 12 notes, you might suddenly have 13 or 11 or something. And this way I can control the kind of falling um, of the notes. And I do this often with chromatic glissandos. I find that it gives it a nice... Um, direction. This, this um, isn't a trick in the sense that it makes it easier. I just, I just like the way that it comes, that it comes out um, for, for myself, but it is an example of doing something not precisely the way that it's, that it's written or usually taught, but actually getting, eventually arriving at something that sounds like the same thing or might even sound better for you uh, in, your, in, in some people's cases. 
So there are some things that I've learned from cellists. Um, when I was growing up, um, my oldest brother played the cello, my father also played the cello, and I saw a lot of cellists play. And I always saw them use so many harmonics all over the place as they moved up and down the cello, um, particularly in arpeggios, but also sometimes along, just along the way as they were going up and down. I asked myself the question, why don't violinists ever do this? And um, instead, the way it's often taught is that arpeggios, you use the same fingering for every key, basically. And, and so forth. And uh, even though in some keys, you actually have very, very useful harmonics that are along the way that could be taken that eliminate some shifting noises. So I got into the habit of basically using different fingerings depending on what key I'm in, depending on what harmonics are available. So in G major, I might... In A major, I might... Use... I might use this harmonic. Or even... Use it this way. This plays in Tchaikovsky concerto. Uh, I'm using the harmonic along the way. I find that it can sometimes make things a lot clearer because those harmonic notes are guaranteed to be in tune, um, as long as your violin is in tune, that is. And I don't see a reason not to incorporate them. I often use harmonics also on the way down or up as, as a part of scales. And this is a quite a personal thing for, for me. I don't see a lot of violinists do, do this, but in the cello world, um, I actually see it all, all the time. I think it comes from the fact that it is genuinely just harder to get around on a cello because of the distances. And so this is kind of necessary to use the harmonics that you have along the way. But I think it actually works quite well on the violin and can sometimes get a cleaner, clearer um, sound in doing arpeggios and scales. So a pretty common cheat that you see sometimes um, is the idea of playing the lower notes of octaves louder than the upper notes. And that can work up to a point, but I think it becomes a problem. Uh, sometimes I've seen violinists play where I don't, I no longer hear the upper note. I'm hearing like and it sounds in tune but it's no longer an octave. So if you do that you have to make sure that always to, to, that it's still an octave. It can be a nice idea to weight the bottom note stronger than the upper one because it gives it a, a richer sound and it makes it sound rounder and it will, the two notes will resonate better with one another. So in that sense, it makes it sound better, but it doesn't, if you feel like it makes the intonation easier, then maybe you're no longer playing the upper note. I hope some of these things are helpful. I, you might, in the course of practicing uh, different things, when you're, when you're working on a really tough problem, you can sometimes suddenly discover a way to do it that sounds the same, but for some reason, for one reason or another, it's easier, more intuitive, or might sound even better. I think what counts is the result and the sound you get, not necessarily how you got there. I hope that's helpful and see you next time.